It's Monday night, it's 10 o'clock, and some people think a killer's getting off scot-free. It's an opinion. He thinks it may have been, that's an opinion. Okay, well, what medical school did y'all go to determine that it's I'm not through. a homicide? I, I, I didn't. I'm through. The investigative unit opens up a closed case. Why there's still an untold story. Now, WBRZ News 2 at 10. It all centers around something that happened inside this house. And the question tonight, was it a crime? Good evening, I'm Sylvia Weatherspoon. And I'm Michael Marsh. Here are the facts first. This story deals with a case in West Baton Rouge Parish. A woman, a wife, mother, and grandmother was found dead less than a year ago. Four different doctors who specialize in autopsies classified her death a homicide. But police in the town of Addis closed the case. No one's been arrested for the woman's death. So we went looking for answers, but the Addis police chief stopped answering questions from News 2 Chief Investigator Chris Nakamoto. It's another hard-hitting story from the investigative unit. Chief Ricky Anderson wasn't happy at all and demanded that I tell him who tipped me off about this. As we try to find answers for the family over how Sandra Renata died, we've encountered pushback and excuses from authorities instead of them reopening the investigation. 59-year-old Sandra Renata loved life, according to her family. Her daughter, Reagan Bellello, holds on to those fond memories. She was a great mother, and she's greatly missed. It happened in the middle of the night on August 9th, 2013. Yeah, I need some help. A 911 call for help came from this home in the 4500 block of Foray Street in Addis. Sandra Renata's husband, Eddie, made the phone call. I found my wife on the floor. She was passed out and unresponsive. I can't wake her. Pleading for help when he found her unresponsive. Show somebody quick. Renata's body was removed from the house, and the West Baton Rouge Parish Coroner's Office conducted a full autopsy. It was determined by Dr. Michael Kramer, who has decades of experience examining dead bodies. Renata was killed. Her cause of death? Homicide from multiple traumatic injuries. Her ribs were fractured, pancreas split in half, and she had a broken nose. It's horrible. Dr. Kramer declined to do an interview, but told News 2 in a written letter, injuries such as these are only seen with severe trauma, such as those in automobile accidents, aviation accidents, or severe beatings. Her injuries are completely consistent with the victim, Mrs. Sandra Renata, succumbing to a savage beating. Homicide as Renata's cause of death was also backed up by the East Baton Rouge Parish Coroner's Office. It issued this report that states they agree and support the cause and manner of death determination originally made by Dr. Paget of the West Baton Rouge Parish Coroner's Office. It's horrible knowing that my mom's death was classified as a homicide and there's no investigation being done. Reagan Bellello was so upset she was in close contact with the Addis Police Chief Ricky Anderson. A Facebook message we obtained from Anderson's account to Reagan Bellello says, Everybody agrees it's a homicide. You believe it's a homicide. So we had to ask why his office is not looking for a killer. Did you ever tell the family that you thought it was a homicide? Nope. You didn't? Nope. We have a Facebook message that we obtained that came from your Facebook account saying that it was a homicide. Did you not send that? I didn't say I, I said it. I never said that I thought it was a homicide. That's when Anderson got agitated and decided he had enough. No comment. Chief, I mean, this is all about justice. This family wants justice. Do you not think they deserve justice? They sure they do. So why don't you do your job as chief and try to get to the bottom of this homicide? Nobody presented any evidence that it was a homicide. Thank you. Reagan Bellello saw the entire case file and was shocked at what she discovered when the Addis Police Department investigated her mother's death with Eddie Renata, her husband. I tried to help my wife. Still in the house. During the investigation, the, the detectives were having him hold the tape measure on different objects that she could have possibly fallen on. So he was assisting investigators as this Correct. was unfolding. How did you learn Correct. that? I saw the autopsy pictures and I saw the investigation pictures. Was that upsetting to you? Extremely. They had wanted to take some measurements in the house. 
Eddie Renata admits he was the last person in the house with his wife's dead body and that he helped investigators. Despite what four different doctors say about his wife's savage beating, Eddie has his own conclusion. I think she had a seizure and died. Last year, with the evidence that was collected, prosecutors took over to see if a crime was committed. The district attorney's office presented this case before a grand jury. After grand jurors listened to testimony from witnesses, they came back with no true bill. The News 2 investigative unit has learned the pathologist who examined Sandra Renata was never called to testify before the grand jury. Instead, the district attorney's office had a third party pathologist come in to interpret his report. So, News 2 checked with other judicial districts about pathologist protocols. Four district attorney offices in our area said they would have wanted the pathologist to examine the body to testify before having someone else read his report. But that wasn't the case in West Baton Rouge Parish, where Ricky Ward is the district attorney. Dr. Michael Kramer, who believes Renata's injuries were consistent with a savage beating, wasn't even invited to give his expertise on what he found during Renata's autopsy. The way the investigation was conducted and the way DA Ricky Ward's office handled it, you know, we've been looking into this for a while, are concerning to family members who want you to wonder what if this was your family member? It's very infuriating. It makes it seem as though there's a lady that was a mother of two, grandmother of three, that, in some people's opinion, maybe her life wasn't important enough for them to get to the bottom of it. Of who killed her? After our interview with Chief Ricky Anderson, family members told the investigative unit Anderson said no one could force him to reopen the investigation and he would investigate this at his leisure. District Attorney Ricky Ward did not return our phone calls to explain why he never had the pathologist who examined Sandra Renata testify before the grand jury. For the WBRZ investigative unit, I'm Chris Nakamoto. Also, we requested the entire case file on the Renato case from Addis Police Chief Ricky Anderson since he says the investigation's closed. The chief denied our request. The WBRZ investigative unit filed a lawsuit requesting the courts order the Addis Police Department to release those records. Records new to, News 2 contends are public. The judge is expected to hear this matter within 14 days. BRZ News 2 at 10. First, an investigative unit follow-up. New information and disturbing allegations from people who knew this woman who turned up dead. She feared for her life. She was being dehumanized in every way. Our interviews raise more questions about how Sandra Renato's death was investigated. Good evening, I'm Sylvie Weatherspoon. And I'm Michael Marsh. What wasn't done is now the center of this controversy. Tonight, News 2's Chief Investigator Chris Nakamoto has a follow-up as the investigative unit reports on getting away with murder. Before Sandra Renata died, she pleaded for help discussing the severe beating she endured, allegedly by her husband. Our investigation shows the married couple had a volatile relationship. A frantic call to 911 came in the middle of the night from this home in Addis. It was August 9th, 2013. I tried to help my wife. Sandra Renata's husband, Eddie, found his wife lifeless downstairs. Yeah, I need some help. I found my wife on the floor. She was passed out and unresponsive. I can't wake her. Renata was pronounced dead inside. The West Baton Rouge Parish Coroner's Office removed her body. And the pathologist who conducted her autopsy said her injuries were consistent with a savage beating. Her ribs were fractured pancreas split in half, and she had a broken nose. Wanda Thompson and Velta Nicholas were Renata's closest confidants before she died, as Renata sought counseling for drinking. Thompson was Renata's nurse, Nicholas a recreational therapist. Both women remember the fear Renata lived in at home. Wanda, I'm afraid Ed is going to kill me. I'm afraid he will beat me to death one of these days. Thompson and Nicholas would not discuss what Renata told them during their counseling sessions, since that information is protected by law. But they talked outside of work a lot and met often. Thompson and Nicholas are now haunted by Renata's final words. She said if something happens to me, Eddie probably did it. That's what she said to me. Uh, if something happens to me, then 
Eddie did this. Court records show Addis police showed up at the Renata household four times from 2007 until 2010 for family disputes. Each time, Sandra Renata was arrested for domestic abuse battery. Each time, her husband Eddie dropped those charges. Yet, medical records given to the WBRZ investigative unit by Renata's daughter detail the mental and physical abuse Sandra Renata endured. On February 25th, 2008, Renata went to the Baton Rouge General after she was kicked in the stomach and had a laceration to her upper lip. The report noted Renata's husband, Eddie, was in the back of a police car. She told me on one occasion that he kicked her in the side and broke a rib. In August of 2010, it was noted Sandy was slung across the patio by her husband like a rag doll. We are encouraging Sandy to go to the doctor and get her legs photographed and have her husband charged with domestic violence. It was noted in the report this is several times she has been beaten by her husband. When the Addis Police Department investigated, it didn't request the above reports and didn't listen to what Renata's therapist had to say. Because she had told me about the beating. While the investigative unit was looking into this, Thompson called Addis Chief Ricky Anderson personally I didn't. to tell him her concerns, but Anderson didn't want to listen. He said, but you know, now Chris Nakamoto is uh, asking me questions. Our Channel 2 is investigating it, so I appreciate your time, but I'm going to let Channel 2 investigate it. Last month, when we asked Anderson about why the death is not being investigated as a homicide, we caught him off guard. There's no evidence. This Facebook message Anderson sent to Renata's daughter, Reagan Bellello, says, everybody agrees it's a homicide. Did you ever tell the family that you thought it was a homicide? Nope. You didn't? Nope. We have a Facebook message that we obtained that came from your Facebook account saying that it was a homicide. Did you not send that? I didn't say it. I said it. I never said that I thought it was a homicide. The information we obtained. I came in about 9 30. The way the investigation was conducted and the lack of an open investigation. The case is closed. Concerns Renata's daughter, Reagan Bellello. The number one suspect holding the tape measure during the investigation while pictures are being taken. I've never heard of such before. Yeah, they wanted to take some measurements in the house. Eddie Renata, Sandra's husband, has maintained his innocence. There's documentation that I guess your wife had complained that she had been beaten or anything like that. Do you, are you aware of that? And did you ever hit her? No, I hadn't beaten my wife. Sandy Renata's counselors don't buy that answer. I would tell her that, Sandy, well, you can. You can go to the police, you can go to the authorities, and she would tell me, oh, they're not going to do anything. Eddie always told me that they're not going to do anything. The way the investigation was conducted by Addis Police and the lack of concern about information that could have helped their investigation leaves Renata's medical counselors to wonder if a killer is getting away with murder. Sandy didn't deserve this. An animal does not deserve this. And, um... I want to see justice for her. She's dead. I have to say what I know. Why are you speaking up today? Because Sandy deserves justice. Late last year, this case went to a grand jury and it was determined no crime was committed. The investigative unit found District Attorney Ricky Ward's office never invited the pathologist to examine Renata to testify before that grand jury. Instead, Ward's office used a third party pathologist to interpret the coroner's office report which is uncommon according to local coroners. It's important to note the two women in our report also did not testify before the grand jury. Chris Nakamoto, WBRZ News 2. Now, the WBRZ investigative unit is suing the Addis Police Department over records we requested involving this case. Records News 2 contends are public since the investigation is now closed. Addis Police denied our request, and the matter is set to go to court tomorrow. WBRZ News 2 at 6. The WBRZ investigative unit took the Addis Police Department to court over records surrounding a death investigation. Good evening. The judge denied WBRZ's request for the records today. But the case was reopened and has the attention of the state attorney general's office. All of this comes after the investigative I, unit I, began I looking into the investigation of Sandra Renato's death. It was classified a homicide by the West Baton Rouge Parish Coroner's Office, but 
it was not investigated as one. News 2's chief investigator Chris Nakamoto is getting answers on why this is a win for a family seeking justice. With the Addis Police Department getting help from the Attorney General, the family hopes a proper investigation will now be conducted and believes this happened as a result of our reports. Addis Police Chief Ricky Anderson agreed to turn over this box of evidence to the state after the WBRZ investigative unit began asking questions about a death inside this house. Sandra Renata was found dead in her home last August and no one has been arrested. The case reached a dead end when a grand jury said it would not charge anyone. One month after our reports, Chief Ricky Anderson sent this letter to the state saying, I was wondering if your office would review my investigative file and consider assisting me with this investigation. It comes as welcome news to Renato's daughter, Reagan Bellello. That's exactly what I've been hoping to have is a proper investigation be done into this. Judge Robin Free listened to the investigative unit's case. Free ruled that because the Attorney General's office will investigate, the documents are not for public view. Now that questions were raised over how Anderson's department handled the investigation, he declined to answer if he would have done anything differently. Part of the problem was I waited for Reagan to bring me the evidence she told me she had. It was never presented to me at all until I was interviewed by Chris Nakamoto. But Anderson didn't elaborate as to why he waited for the victim's family to supply his office with evidence. Our investigation showed Sandra Renata's injuries resulted from a savage beating. Records show her ribs were broken, pancreas split in half, and she had a broken nose. At the end of the day, all sides walked away winners, with a fresh set of eyes looking into Bolello's mother's death. A thorough investigation, not skipping over things here and there, like what was done before, um, doing it completely, thoroughly, checking everything um, to get whatever evidence can be acquired. Anderson plans to turn over the evidence he has to the state tomorrow. It's unclear how long its investigation into this homicide will take.